This is a really significant moment for AMD, and it's a significant moment for me. It's actually the very first time that we are giving a keynote here at CES, and I'm really excited to have the opportunity to explore the future of computing and graphics technologies with you this morning. In 2000, we launched the world's first gigahertz CPU. In 2003, we led the industry transition to the first 64-bit x86 processors. And by the way, these are still the de facto standard for PCs and servers. In 2008, we launched the first single GPU to deliver a teraflop of compute performance. And in 2011, we were the first company to combine x86 CPUs and high-performance GPUs onto a single chip that we call an APU. And over the last seven years, we have powered the highest performance game consoles that have ever been produced. Today, I'm going to show you some of the things that will get us a significant inflection point in performance. We want to bring desktop-level performance to a thin and light notebook with all-day battery life. Now, this week at CES, earlier this week, we actually introduced our second-generation Ryzen mobile processor. Ryzen second generation is still the fastest processor for ultra-thin notebooks. And when you take a look at some of these numbers, when you're running everyday tasks like loading web pages, up to 14% faster. Editing media, up to 27% faster. And so in second gen, we offer up to 12 hours of general productivity and 10 hours of video playback. And so second gen Ryzen actually offers up to 10 Radeon Vega graphics cores and enables real gaming in an ultra-thin form factor. So starting next month, we will make our most advanced discrete-level graphics drivers available with Ryzen Mobile. And those users can get that direct from AMD.com. But this week at CES, we're announcing that the first AMD-powered Chromebooks. So let's start our exploration of gaming with one of the best people in the industry on this subject and a great friend of AMD. Please welcome to the stage head of gaming at Microsoft, Phil Spencer. Can we talk a little bit about what's next? Yeah, you know, we're as a company, we look at the opportunity in gaming. And one of the things I wanted to say is when we think about who our partners are, we think about great companies that do great work, but also in the right way. And you are somebody that I've respected a ton in this industry, and Thank I've you. seen the way you've led AMD. Uh, and I think having a partner like AMD that works so collaboratively, collaboratively with us on our future technology, but also at a cultural level, I think fits so well, it's just awesome to have you as a partner. Thank so you. Thank you for that. And as we look forward to future platforms that we're building and work that we're doing, the partnerships and the innovations that we've seen in the past that have led to what we've been able to do today, I think are going to be critically important to our future endeavors. So I'm really looking forward to showing those to people more in the future. AMD loves gamers. AMD loves high performance. So for all of our Radeon fans, it's time to meet the next generation of high performance gaming GPUs. Today, I'm really, really happy to show you for the very first time our new high-end GPU for gamers and creators, AMD Radeon 7. Radeon 7 is the second generation Vega graphics core it is the world's first 7 nanometer gaming GPU. Radeon 7 has 60 compute units running at up to 1.8 gigahertz. Radeon 7 uses advanced 7 nanometer process technology. As I said, this is the world's first 7 nanometer gaming GPU. And what we get for that is 25% more performance at the same power. And lastly, Radeon 7 has massive memory. 16 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory with industry-leading terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. So if you think about all of that memory and all of that compute, you can imagine how good this GPU is for content creation. We see up to 30% improvement in things like Blender and Adobe Premiere. You can imagine 30% does a lot. What you see is across Vulkan, DX12, and some of the popular esports titles, you see significant improvements when running at 4K and max settings. Radeon 7 has better performance in some of the latest Vulcan games, like Strange Brigade, and is very competitive 
at both DX11 and DX12 games. We will be uh, announcing that uh, for a limited time, we will bundle uh, Division 2 with Radeon 7 and select Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 second generation processors. All right, so hopefully by now you realize that Radeon 7 is the most powerful gaming GPU we have ever built and really the most powerful consumer GPU available for content creation. Radeon 7 will go on sale on February 7th for $6.99 from leading e-tailers, system integrators, direct on AMD.com, and an Alienware Area 51 desktop. For a limited time, Radeon 7 will become bundled with uh, Resident Evil 2, DMC5 that you saw, and the Division 2. But we have a lot more coming this year. So both uh, next generation CPUs and GPUs. And I look forward to sharing more of that progress as the year progresses. Second Gen Epic is powered by our new Zen 2 processor core and built using the world's most advanced 7 nanometer manufacturing technology. We are seeing incredible performance gains compared to the current generation Epic. Things like four times the floating point performance, double the compute performance per socket, and up to 64 cores and 128 threads per processor. And we use the same socket and the same platform as the current generation. So to demonstrate the power of our next generation Epic, I'm going to show you a demo. It's a single early version of Epic processor compared to two of our competitors' highest end Xeon Platinum 8180 processors. The Epic processor is running faster. It's running about 15% faster. That the second generation AMD Epic processor is absolutely on track and we will start shipping in the middle of 2019. I've got one more big thing for you today. Third gen Ryzen is also powered by the Sen2 core. Also has seven nanometer technology. And as a desktop processor, it will absolutely set the bar on performance, technology, and power efficiency. And to show you a little bit, I'm gonna give you today the first ever public preview Preview. No, it's a preview <laughs> um, of what next-gen Ryzen can do. What we're going to show you today is now third-gen Ryzen with a head-to-head -head comparison against the top-of-the-line Core i9 9900K running the industry standards in a bench benchmark. So note, let me tell you what we're running. We're running 8-core, 16-thread Ryzen, not final frequency, early, uh, early, um, early uh, sample and we're running stock frequencies of the, um, of the Intel part. So, Lewis and Amit, are you ready? Okay, let's start the demo, please. Ryzen looks like 25, 2057. Our competitor is running at 2040. So, um, that sounds like a win. Does it sound like a win? So, you can see that the system power of third gen Ryzen is running uh, actually about 30% lower than uh, of the competing system. Some of you may actually wonder what third generation Ryzen actually looks like. So, take a look. For the first time, we will show you how Ryzen looks under the hood. It's different from what you normally expect. It's using our industry-leading triplet design. So the smaller die is our seven nanometer Zen 2 processor die with eight cores and 16 threads. The larger of the dies is actually our I.O. die. This I.O. die is specif specifically designed for the PC market and for desktops, and it feeds the data between the Zen 2 engine and the rest of the system. Next Gen Ryzen will also be the world's first PC platform to support the ultra-fast PCI Express Gen 4 standard. So third Gen Ryzen will run on the same AM AM4 desktop infrastructure so it's really simple. For all of you who are on Ryzen today, really simple upgrade. We have a lot going on, and I'm really happy to tell you that uh, we look forward to sharing that information as we get closer to the product launch. And we will be launching in the middle of 2019. Today, I've shown you a lot. Um, I've shown you CPUs. I've shown you GPUs. Um, I've shown you what it's, what's required to really get a step function in computing performance and really put us on a new trajectory moving forward. So I'd like to believe when we look back on today, when we look back on 2019, we're gonna see that this is an inflection point in that journey. It's gonna be an incredibly exciting 2019. 
Thank you, thank you for all your support, and thank you for your time today.